this program with a special bulletin. America is now under martial law. Giuliani brainwashed you well, didn't he? All constitutional rights have been suspended. Stay in your homes. Do not attempt to contact loved ones, insurance agents, or attorneys. Shut up. Do not attempt to think or depression may occur. Stay in your homes. Curfew is at 7 p.m. sharp after work. Anyone caught outside the gates of their subdivisions after curfew will be shot. Remain calm. Do not panic. Your neighborhood watch officer will be by to collect urine samples in the morning. <laughs> Anyone interfering with the collection of urine samples will be shot. Houses will be inspected for trace elements at noon. Anyone failing to display the embossed black velvet Mexican style painting of King George II on their living room wall will be shot. Boy, Giuliani has conditioned you well. <laughs> to further protect private property against terrorist attacks, cameras and surveillance equipment will be placed on all lamp posts and street lights. Anyone failing to attend morning school prayer and prescribed worship services on Sunday will be promptly arrested and dispatched to a re-education resort. <laughs> Stay in your homes. Remain calm. The number one enemy of progress is questions. National security is more important than individual rights. Under the provisions of the drug war, zero tolerance, and the Child Protection and Obscenity Enforcement Act, all property and life savings of suspected drug users and suspected pornographers will be seized and sold prior to trial. Anyone opposing this policy will be presumed to be under the influence of drugs and shipped immediately to boot camp to serve a sentence of hard labor beneath an inflatable statue of Nancy Reagan <laughs> being humped by John Ashcroft. Sports broadcasts will proceed as scheduled. <laughs> no more than two people may gather anywhere without permission. Use only the drugs prescribed by your coach, your boss, or your supervisor. <laughs> Shut up! Be happy! Obey all orders without question. Shut up! The comfort you've demanded is now mandatory. At last! Everything is done for you. All right, hear ye, hear ye. What do George W. Bush Dick Cheney, John Ashcroft, Jeb Bush, Joseph Lieberman, House Speaker Dennis Hastert, House Dictator Tom DeLay, Bill Clinton, Bill O'Reilly, Rush Limbaugh, George Will, Newt Gingrich, Kenneth Starr, Antonin Scalia, Wayne LaPierre, the head of the National Rifle Association, Sylvester Rambo Stallone, and Arnold Terminator Schwarzenegger all have in common. They're all terrorists. Everybody says that, every show. They all are rah-rah gung-ho for a new bloodbath in the Middle East to invade Iraq 
and not a damn one of them ever served in the military. But I get equally frightened when somebody like Bush comes right out and says, You're either with us or with the terrorists. <laughs> Before they get even more carried away than they already have, now is the time to stand up and say, yo, we're not with Bush or the terrorists. In 1991, Jimmy Carter publicly warned the last George Bush that his Gulf War would set back peace and Middle Eastern relations at least 20 years. Now what happens? Now what do we do? I fear a mass slaughter of innocent civilians already far greater than that of the World Trade Center, with the clown prince of the Texas oil barons being handed the keys to weapons of mass destruction. While Israel is being dragged down the toilet by its own Saddam Hussein, and his name is Ariel Sharon. No one has been quicker to disrespect the victims of the tragedy and cynically exploit the whole situation and manipulate our anger and our fear than the Bush administration themselves. Let's use the tragedy of September 11th to justify a cowboy war going into Iraq. <laughs> And right after it happened, remember when one of the Bush people, I think it was Bush himself actually, said that in order to fight terrorism, it was urgent that we go drill for oil in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. Yeah! We'll show them. Even though that oil, when they were talking about it during the campaign in 2000, it turned out it was earmarked for sale to China. And Bush said, oh yeah, Congress got into the act and they ordered, immediately ordered up 100 more multi-gazillion dollar tanker jets from Boeing, even though the Air Force said they didn't need them. And Bush said to fight terrorism was the justification for getting Congress and they did roll over like little puppy dogs and give him so-called fast track authority to negotiate more evil trade agreements than the fine tradition of NAFTA and the GATT Treaty, General Agreement on Trade and Tariffs, the one that gave us your friend and mine, the WTO. I hear a cell phone. <laughs> Turn them off now, because the next one, I expect people to be vigilant, patriotic Americans. And if it's next to you, grab it and give it to me. Anyway, they wanted fast-track authority to negotiate the Free Trade Agreement of the Americas, which is kind of like NAFTA on crack. <laughs> And it would extend not just to like, NAFTA's only Canada, America, Mexico, and you know, it's basically corporations, Uber Alice, you can't worry about environmental degradation or exporting jobs to sweatshops and other places. Why not? And it hasn't helped the Mexican economy any either, by the way, as our genetically mutilated Frankencorn goes down there by the dump truck load at a price so cheap the peasant farmers can't sell their own, so they're abandoning their ancestral homes and living homeless in the squats in Mexico City and Guadalajara and the rest. Anyway, they think that would be a great idea for the whole rest of the hemisphere. North America, South America, Central America, Caribbean, only Castro is, escapes on this one. Only they want to give it even nastier teeth, whereby corporations can shake down other countries for sanctions or blood money for such things as failure to privatize their water supply, failure to privatize their schools, failure to let somebody like Clear Channel take over all their radio stations, or uh, Rupert Murdoch, owner of the New York Post, take over all of the media or whatever. Even now, under NAFTA, UPS, United Parcel Service, is suing Mexico, or excuse me, suing Canada under NAFTA 
for interfering with their profits by having their own postal service. <laughs> yeah, next time you UPS anything, think of that, too. And that's what they want to open the floodgates for all up and down North and South America. Wonderful. And anybody who attacks this or takes issue with it and fights what is now called globalization, although I would call it uh, corporate coup or corporate feudalism or whatever, not capitalism, feudalism, they are demonized as helping the terrorists and the Wall Street Journal a couple times and Silvio Berlusconi, the Prime Minister of Italy, even came out and said that the people protesting in Seattle and then in Genova and Italy later on caused the towers to go down. And Lynn Cheney, Dick's wife, who's kind of the tipper gore of academia, <laughs> has been in on this too. During the Reagan-Bush regime, she was head of the National Endowment for the Humanities for something like eight years and cut off funding for all these research projects and school university activities and things that she deemed political. But if it was researching germ bombs or something that would benefit corporations or genetically mutilate the Franken food or whatever, then it was patriotically correct, therefore it was okay. And now she and Senator Joseph Lieberman, among others, are part of the American Council of Trustees and Alumni who issued a report after September 11th saying that the weakest link in our fight against terrorism was college professors. Again? <laughs> Listing 117 what they called unpatriotic acts, people who were the weakest link for saying, and they said they didn't just want to give them demerits, they wanted them fired, for things as small as the University of Oregon instructor saying that, oh, we have to understand people in the Middle East's reasons for hatred over there. That was all he said. The scary part is they have a lot of power because they sit on $3 billion worth of grant money every year. Then we have your friend and mine, John Ashcroft. Grabbing through the USA Patriot Act, which was mainly authored by a Democrat, Senator Bob Graham from Florida, but most of Congress didn't even bother to read it. Only one senator voted against it. And now we're stuck with a situation where, first of all, again, cynically taking advantage of what we feel about September 11th, they go and round up almost at random 5,000 people of Middle Eastern ancestry and immigrants and all, lock them up. There's still maybe as many as 1,000 locked away, but we can't tell where they are. We don't know who they are. We don't know why they're being held. None of them has been charged with a terrorist. We don't know where they are. Amnesty International found some of them and slapped our face saying we were keeping some in solitary, shackles, not letting them go outside or exercise, and they still haven't been charged with a crime. The FBI justifies this by saying, well, this Al-Qaeda thing is like a mosaic, and we're trying to figure out if any of these people fit in the mosaic. And hey, if we get 50 informants out of the deal, that's 50 more than we have now. And then they say, we're going to take advantage of all this to start rounding up people we don't like. Anybody a Bush administration official declares to be a suspected terrorist and extry them before military tribunals in other people's countries. And then if the tribunal votes, however narrowly, to execute them on the spot with no appeal or anything, they get executed on the spot. And we've also decided the Geneva Convention doesn't apply to us, and we can abduct people out of Afghanistan or wherever and lock them in human-sized rat cages out of the sun in Guantanamo Bay. They're building a new prison there now for all the other people we intend to kidnap in years to come. And guess who got the contract to do it? Ever heard of the Halliburton Corporation? Oh, shit! They are a construction company that mainly works in the oil industry, building pipelines and infrastructure to get the oil out of the ground and whatnot. And up until he became, uh, up until he took public office again, 
The head of Halliburton was Dick Cheney. Yeah. But think for a minute. Think of how any of us would feel if Saddam Hussein, another black beret guy now that I think about it, do I want to draw a mustache on me tonight too? Have you noticed how big his mustache is? It's like a Groucho Marx one or something. Anyway, how would we feel if Saddam Hussein or even Canada sent troops into this country to round up people they didn't ha happen to like, try them in a park a couple blocks away from here, shoot them and head back to Iraq or to Canada or whatever? I have a feeling we wouldn't be very pleased about that. And they define a suspected terrorist as anybody who attempts to influence the policy of a government, a government, they don't say which one, by intimidation or coercion. <laughs> kind of like what we're doing to Iraq or the Palestinians. But that's such a broad umbrella, it could include sit-ins, demonstrations, peaceful marches, boycotts, the kind of pranks I have such a soft spot in my heart for as well. <laughs> Patriot Act also says that now the FBI, I wonder if Hillary Clinton voted for it, I'll bet she did. <laughs> it takes a village to R-A-Z-E, a child after that. <laughs> in that Patriot Act, it says that the FBI can come into any of our homes anytime they want without a warrant, search the whole thing, go through files, go through business records, go through your computers, put a little cookie in there if they want to, and not even tell you they've been there. But if you find that they have and you tell somebody else, you can go to jail for that, too. And Ashcrack has also, <laughs> has also said that it's time for the, gov for the Justice Depart to in Department, once again, to get serious about infiltrating political organizations, even churches, and bring back maybe some of that program that the FBI had that they never officially abolished called COINTELPRO. Shit. You've heard of that. The one where they tried to sabotage Students for a Democratic Society and other anti-war groups and assassinated Black Panther leaders, killed American Indian Movement leaders, killed Puerto Rican independence organizers, and later on even tried to kill environmental activists. Specifically, Judy Berry and Daryl Cherney of Earth First, who in 1990, all of a sudden they're driving their car through Oakland, Judy's car, and it blew up. And the FBI magically was on the scene within minutes to charge them with bombing themselves. <laughs> Even though Ju the car was right under the, Ju the seat on Judy's side, so it literally blew her butt off. And she spent the rest of her life in severe pain before dying prematurely of breast cancer a few years ago. Daryl has recovered from the shattered eardrum and the other injuries. But when they say in the corporate media that 85% of Americans support bringing COINTELPRO type stuff back, maybe they ought to take into account that Judy's estate and Daryl Cherney just won a $4 million judgment against the FBI after 12 years. <laughs> for violating their civil rights. But meanwhile, the FBI is now making the rounds of libraries and bookstores trying to find out who... Well, obviously, but I'm giving you the details. I'm giving you all the reasons they are, why they are, and what they're doing. You know, they're trying to get lists of, from libraries and bookstores of who is reading or buying what book. And if you know a bookstore is cooperating with them, then go to another bookstore. Or at least, you know, the next time the landlord evicts you, at least check out the anarchist cookbook in their name. Or <laughs> it's beginning to look a lot like 1984. <laughs> endless, endless war. That's what they're trying for. Bush and Cheney and Rumsfeld have all said, well, you better be prepared, America. This war on terrorism, it could take five years. It could take 10 years. It could take our entire lifetime. 
especially if we can get away with it. And so now we've sent a few troops into Yemen, and there's some more in the Philippines, and we've sent a whole bunch of military advisors, we call them. That was what we called our initial dispatch into Vietnam, too. So it's creepy about it. Sent them into Colombia. We're not even calling it the drug war anymore. We're saying, oh, we're, we're fighting terrorism there. Because even though both the right-wing paramilitary death squads were getting our help through the military aid we give the Colombian army and the leftist insurgents fighting them are all involved in the drug trade, presumably, we're going to side with our drug lords in order to wipe out their drug lords <laughs> to clear the land back in the jungle of the Andes for oil exploration, where indigenous people aren't very happy about that. And I guess that makes them terrorists or drug lords or whatever. As Noam Chomsky put it, we're not intervening there to stop atrocities, we're intervening to escalate atrocities. Ooh, that's a wool beret that's starting to itch. Sorry, folks. Bush, State of the Union address. Iran, Iraq and North Korea for an axis of evil. Of course, some people say that's Bush, Cheney, Rumsfeld, and Ashcrack, but what, what did we gain with that? All we gained was undermining the moderates in Iran who were making genuine progress and whittling away the theocratic dictatorship of the Ayatollahs and all. And we uh, pulled the rug out from under President Kim Dae-jung in South Korea, too. And he had made more progress in 50, than anybody in 50 years in breaking down the walls between South and North Korea, then North Korea, for the most part, slammed the door in his face after that threat, afraid they were gonna get bombed as well. And they've said, perhaps in order to save the nuclear industry, now we need little trick-or-treat bag size, fun size nuclear bombs, <laughs> backpack nukes, so you can go up and roll them into a cave in Afghanistan and hopefully make it down the mountain before the mountain is blown up and lands on top of you and clear out of there before the next one collapses in a landslide too from the tremors. After all, speaking of tremors, how many of you know that the last of those big earthquakes in Los Angeles happened the same day as an underground nuke test in Nevada? That's what we're playing with here. And most irresponsible of all, immediately they jump in to fight terrorism. We need to put nuclear weapons in outer space and spend hundreds of billions of dollars giving Ronald Reagan his dream come true of Star Wars. A lot of good those would have done to prevent the planes hitting the towers and the Pentagon, but oh no, we need this so badly that when the warnings were coming in to uh, Condoleezza and Rummy and the rest, according to Time Magazine, that Al-Qaeda was up to something really scary and we ought to watch out for it, they were like, oh, forget that Osama pipsqueak. Our main goal is to put nukes in space. That's what we should be concentrating on. It's not even a defensive weapon. What else could it be but an offensive weapon? The Pentagon justifies it saying, well, we have to put them in space because we need full spectrum dominance, they call it. Full spectrum dominance. Meaning if a Bin Laden or a Hugo Chavez or somebody, a little town in Chile who doesn't like McDonald's gets too uppity against us, you better beware because there's gonna be a laser beam coming out of the sky to fry your ass right then and there. But what happens if one of those things malfunctions? <laughs> what happens if one of those crashes back down to Earth, like many satellites have to do after a while, like the Russian space station Mir did not very long ago? What happens then, and the payload of plutonium blows? And will that could potentially scattering enough plutonium particles all over our atmosphere to slowly but surely cause radiation poisoning in almost every living critter left on Earth. But hey, as long as it enriches Rumsfeld's friends, it's worth the risk, I suppose. 
They've also said, oh, don't worry. If well, something like that should malfunction and nuke Bush and Cheney by mistake, for example, well, there's a shadow government in place as we speak unnamed bureaucrats in unknown locations who must be bored out of their minds by now, ready to step in and run everything should we lose our precious Bush administration. Although maybe the shadow government is something we have, we've had all along, and really they have names like Exxon and Microsoft and Lockheed and General Motors, Walt Disney, Virgin Megastore, etc. There is our shadow government. And in the spirit of international solidarity against terrorism and rogue nations, the Bush administration once again nominated America as the world's number one rogue nation by pulling out of the international criminal court that people have worked so long to set up as a mechanism for bringing people like Milosevic and the people supposedly responsible for the genocide in Rwanda and Burundi, for example, finally bring them to justice. Eh, 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 eh. Not if it's Americans. We're special. Kissinger. They, oh, yeah, that's who they're trying to protect. And the Bush family. <laughs> oh, yes, the Bush family. I also fear for all the people of Middle Eastern descent being subjected to racism and hatred all over the world right now, including here. I was in Tallahassee last spring, and a week before I got there, somebody drove his pickup truck into the front door of the local mosque to show his feelings about immigrants and all. When I was in Edinburgh in Scotland a little less than a year ago, same night, somebody blew, dynamited the main, or bombed the main mosque in town. And after September 11th, somebody was opening their gas station on, in Mesa, Arizona, on the edge of Phoenix. First day of business, opens his gas station, pickup truck pulls up and does a drive-by. The guy blows his head off because it had a turban on it justifying it later, saying he was going to stand, he was standing up for America. And I also fear for what's going to happen to all the veterans of the war on terrorism. And as Michael Moore put it, will we ever get to the point that we realize we will be more secure when the rest of the world is living in poverty so we can have nice running shoes? <laughs> Instead, starting in this very city and spreading like a computer virus, fight back, America. Let, let them know they can't keep us down. Be patriotic. Go shopping. <laughs> Isn't it our appetite for shopping for more and more stuff at a cheaper and cheaper price, regardless if it was made by slaves in another country, that's creating all the inequality and anger that's breeding terrorism in the first place. And don't let the more radical than thou tell you that just because you may not be doing exactly what they're doing or as much as they're doing that you might as well not bother at all. Bullshit. Doing something is better than doing nothing. And fighting your corporate power, you can do it as an individual so easily and turn other people on to start in this way too. Should you decide to do so, just make yourself a little vow. I'm not cooperating with the corporate agenda anymore. They can't have me. That means they can't have my money anymore. No more chain stores, no more money to chain restaurants, no more money to big box mega stores that you don't see as much here, but they're killing towns everywhere else. Don't give them your money. And even if you do wind up in a real highfalutin career track, doctor, lawyer, contractor, dentist, website, guru, genius, whatever, one way of giving back to the community is just to give back to the community. You know, doing this, providing the service that you make so much money from to people who can't afford it for free every once in a while. As hard as it is to find meaningful work that'll pay the bills, especially in a high rent place like this one, try not to work for them. Yes. Don't give them your time, your energy, and your intelligence. 
but if you must work for them, just remember that the computer age has ushered in a whole new frontier of sabotage on the job. <laughs> Become the media. Not just supporting the